Hi everyone, hi again. It's very nice to meet you all and it's a great pleasure for me to share my ideas about education with uh, the students of uh, this well-known and uh, international, if, if it is international, uh, Nazarbayev University here. My name is Lana. My name is Lana Dikanchi. You can find me on the uh, Facebook, Instagram. And if you have any further questions after this lecture, you're welcome. And I'm very happy. I'm always very happy to discuss ideas in education. <laughs> okay, let me start with a brainstorm. Have you been involved in the brainstorm before? Okay. I just need your ideas as fast as possible, any ideas that come to your mind. And these ideas can be repeated, just tell me anything that comes to your mind. What a child is. Human being. Human <laughs> being, okay. Happiness. Happiness, okay. Noise. Noise. Ah. Noise. <laughs> Troublemaker. Troublemaker. <laughs> Discover. 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 Okay. New generation. New generation. Subject. Okay. Oh, treasure. Treasure. Let's make a big list. Love. 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 Kind of feeling, yeah. Joy. Joy. Uh, yeah. Responsibility. Responsibility. Education. Education. Child appeared. And then 
If you go further, there would be. Do we have another yeah. one? <laughs> if you go further from that early times, there would be great ideas about education and how how people should treat a child to have a better future. That would be Mark in the early times. That would be um, Rousseau. I'm not sure if I spell it right. Um, that would be many, many other scientists, and including those that you already maybe um, researched, like Freud and uh, Erickson, Erickson and um, Piaget and Montessori. Why I I love Montessori. Why it stands? For, why for me she stands out um, of this role? Why she is not the same scientist? She would be the one who would not just create a theory and check and try it on a child and see if it works or not. She was the one who would use a scientific approach, who would observe a lot. She would, during her lifetime, she would travel a lot around the world and she would prove that her observation about the child nature and about child, uh, periods of development would be the same for any human being in any part of the world. Despite the culture, despite the language, despite the race, despite the geography, and so on. Um, I need to check one. Okay. What? Um, let's see what education is. What? What is education? Can you just? Yes, it is a process of development of your know of gaining knowledge, of gaining skills, behavior, models, beliefs, way of thinking it, etc. So what is the purpose of knowledge? Find the truth. Find the truth. Develop. So to be adapted. To be adapted. To be adapted. To be environment. To be environment. Okay, if you will search for these definitions, you will find many of them. But it's very, very important to find out for yourself why do I need education? Why do my children need education? Why do people need education? Please find people for one year now. Yes. 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 Okay. Um, so, as mathematicians say, mathematicians are very like, they would say that if you want to solve a problem, start to solve it from the end. What, what do you want to see in the end? In the child, in your students, as a teacher, uh, in the child, the talent, or in children, if you talk about the generation, it is our goal. And if we think, what do we need here? What is our final goal? Then we will think about the approaches that we would, what, uh, the methods, what we should teach them, how we should teach them, and so on. So, again, if you, um, if you, so if we go back to the history, we would see that economically they would need, like last century, from the economical point of view, a human being needed to be like, um, he doesn't need much conscious, and it's good not to have much conscious because you have to do routine, everyday, repeated things. And that's very, very boring. That's not a creative person or who's looking for yourself and who loves fun and 
who has freedom inside, he's not going to do that kind of work. So, but now we see, and we have an educational style of Soviet time. Do you remember? So, uh, and that was education. But just recall, I don't know how well, um, how it was in your country, but uh, what, just recall, what kind of schools, what kind of experience did you have in your school? Could you move a lot? No. Was no. so you encouraged to think? No. I can talk a little bit about my sister-in-law's experience. Because she, oh, yeah. she, she was in the Soviet country? Right. Yeah, sure. Just, uh, just, just uh, try to match. Right. Do they have much freedom? I thought, well, from what she described to me, she was supposed to be very patriotic toward the motherland. And, and so all her, her uh, upbringing, you know, being a part of a pioneer and, and all the other things that followed in her, her education was for the state, for the benefit of the state. Yeah, sure. Just, if we recall ourselves being in a classroom, we shouldn't, should, could we, uh, were we allowed to talk? No, not so much. Mm -hmm. Critical thinking was not so much developed. Yes, That's if you create, come up with an idea, was it welcomed? Just follow the yeah. command and that's it. Yes, we have to follow the command. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so the information as it is. Do what they say. Sure, but now we live in a, environment that requires, that demands from us creativity to be successful, creativity, thinking what you do, come up with new ideas, to be free, to know what is your idea, what is your um, understanding, uh, who are you, are you doing the job that you like, and <laughs> something like this, but before how we were treated, it's, it wasn't, it's so, it was so far from that. And here we come with, I want to share why I love, why when I first hear and see actually the Montessori teach children being in a group and working, why I was so astonished, why I thought that I, I actually, my whole, um, Personality was against that. I denied, I couldn't believe that it is possible, and I thought maybe I was a little bit jealous. I understand that we didn't have so much freedom. So, what, 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 what I like about it first is activity. Again, we will just recall ourselves in the school days. Who is active in the classroom? Yeah, teacher. He is explaining. He is preparing for the class. And what is left for the students? What do students do? Just receive the information. Yes. And that was so hard because you're just sitting and trying to understand what she's thinking of. And what she is explaining, what kind of images she does have in, in her mind. So, with Montessori, in the Montessori environment, child is active. He is, uh, he is to choose what he's going to do. He is to choose. Um, whether he should rest, or drink, or eat, or study. If he, if he wants to explore something, and he wants to learn, that is possible only if you see, have you ever seen the Montessori environment? A Montessori classroom? Okay, sorry, I didn't um, have, I don't have any pictures, but it, just imagine a room, with child-sized furniture. And when a child comes in, he understands that I can reach everything here. So as, as if it is all for me. Mm -hmm. 
as if people here in this room understand my needs. So I don't have to ask anyone if I want to drink. Here's a glass, here's a water. As if somebody understands that if I need um, uh, something to eat. So here's a table with some snack and you are welcome to help yourself. Here's the materials that if I want to learn, here's the materials and they're all within your reach and you can take it and manipulate it and uh, explore it. So the strategy of Montessori teachers would be like um, if a child comes into the room and he's not ready to choose, he's not choosing anything, she would okay, do this. Okay, maybe this, maybe you will like that, or maybe so she will she will wait, she would believe in child's nature, she would believe in a child's um, wisdom that it's not her, it's not the teacher, it's a child who knows what she, what he's gonna she or he is going to be. What is his mission, her mission in, in this life? So activity, so very standard. Um, our teachers in our classrooms, they would be externally passive. Most of the time, they would stand and they would observe children taking material from the shelf concentrating and working with it and putting it back and moving around the classroom taking something from math going to the self-care area and maybe drink or maybe wash something then go back maybe to the um, um, we, we call it space area where he, where he can learn some any science, so learning from the materials. So next, what we, I'm going to explain is like material. What what kind of materials did you have at school? Kindergarten or school? Anything? Textbooks. Textbooks. It would be textbooks. Yeah. Books. Color pens and pencils. pencils Color papers. Board. Board films. and chalk. chalk. Films. Films. Very, very rare. Right. Very, very rare. It's like it's maybe in, in some height. Right? So, like if, okay, it can, from an economical point of view, that was a huge resource as last century. If we have books, we are happy. Yeah. But now, we are so rich country. We, have, we can have everything for our kids, but we still have words and books, yeah. right? But in Montessori environment, they would have more than 300 materials. I don't know, I told the number just because it is, in, uh, it is like that in my uh, kindergarten, but it varies. It, it could have even more and more and more. Why? Because it's not the teacher who teaches, it, it, it is the material. And <coughs> mater uh, what, what is special about this material in Montessori environment? It's only in singular, how, how can you say that? It's only one piece of material of the same kind, of one kind, mm -hmm. only one. For example, if there would be um, pink, pink tower blocks, it would be only one pink tower mm -hmm. with cubes of different size, only one. And if it is occupied by one child, yeah. the other one should understand and wait. wait. Till he finishes his work with this material. So singular or how can I say one copy or one thing? 
What's in English? Okay. Um, the material, Montessori materials, they are self-learning. When you take the material, you don't need a teacher to explain where to put, to, to what, uh, if you take something, you know, your sensorial intellect will show you how to proceed, how to work with this material. So the control of errors is in the material itself. It could be a mechanical, it could, it could be an eye control, but it's really uh, something amazing that a child could take and learn from the material about the size, about the length, about the weight, I don't know, about the um, quantity and quality and, and so on and so forth. They learn from manipulating, from being active with this material. And a teacher is really needed at the time to introduce new concepts and to give a word for that. Self-learning. I'm going to pass around your stick of computer. Just yeah, sure. Little ones, right? But you can see a yeah. little bit. Um, these are the pictures. And the, it shows the materials um, from the classroom. The Montessori classroom is divided into the areas. The area of self-care, the area of math, of sensorial materials, of language, of uh, sciences. Why do many of you have on a singular form of teaching? What's the topic? What do you think? Do you, you don't like what? Do, what is your feeling about that? You don't like that on the single. I don't know. Why we don't give like. everyone to you. <laughs> to develop patience. Patience. Yes, to develop. It from the social point of view, this Montessori education gives a, an enormous and very sound education because socially, kids learn how to uh, wait. How to how to keep to a cue? So you have a line, and you have uh, <coughs> once you finish, you can maybe do a word. They um, this also um, educates them to respect to respect their work and to respect the work of others. It also helps to. Um, the skills of observation, because when I see, when, when a child sees another child, maybe who is um, more experienced, maybe he is uh, older, and he sees how he manages this material, but when I took that, I didn't get that, I didn't understand about the... Okay. jealousy, competition, and compare, comparison. I'm always comparing me and Arman, and what he can do, I cannot do that. And we're doing the same thing at the same time, and we have one teacher. That's actually the huge hint that something wrong with me. But there is no understanding that I could have another temple, another interest, or maybe I'm sick, or maybe I didn't have enough sleep today or maybe I'm hungry. 
But in Montessori, you come and if you're hungry, you eat. If you're tired, you rest. If you want to drink, you drink. And at last, I'm ready. I'm not hungry. I'm, um, I'm energetic. I'm going to do something. So, in the traditional system, it gives such a demerit of the character that we have. That day by day, we've been educated as not help each other, not talk to each other, not um, cooperate. Because we, have, we are the same age, we are the same we have the same task. And in Montessori, they have zero to three year old, three to six, six to nine, etc. until 15. And this is one class, this is another class. And they see um, if a child is four and he comes into Montessori class, he sees some, some, somebody who is older and who is bigger and stronger. He understands, I respect him, I respect his age, I respect his strength, but I will be. It's not me, because I am younger. And that's how younger students, they respect older ones, and older ones, they respect younger ones, because they remember, last year I couldn't do that, but I can help. So, because of this, children are encouraged in the Montessori environment to help each other, to cooperate, to teach, to wait, to explain. Can I ask yeah. Yes, it's interesting about age. I found like the idea is really good, but some people would argue that what needs the children of age of three is different from the children of age of six. So you should create an environment which and uh, support the needs of each age. Right. How do you do it in your school? Yes, that's even more interesting. Why Montessori did that? Because she observed a lot. So we we will continue this later. I, I want to stop here. That's, that's a really good question. She um, she said that uh, a person goes through three embryonic periods. First is physical one. If you know, there is only one cell in the beginning and it develops into a body. Right? If you just do something wrong, if you eat something wrong, if you, because of the ecology or you get sick, will it influence on the, on the embryo, on the, on the body? Formation of body? Mm -hmm. Sure. So, we think about the good condition, so the body is uh, is developed well. Then she says, from zero to three, he, she calls it a spiritual embryo. What is it? She says that the character in the beginning, there is no character in the beginning. There is some natural, like temper or something like that. Even it is. Um, because of the physical development. It's, it is connected to that. But she said that there is no character. Whether this child will be kind and will be, um, will have a positive thinking about the world and how we do everything about the character, it will form during these years. What does she need? You would read in Montessori books that child shows us every time, every day she shows what he needs. And we, if we understand the needs of a child at this period, and we comply with this requirement, we'll get a developed character. At three to six, she calls it social embryo. Vital part 
environment to the Montessori environment. And she noticed the personality of a teacher influences on how children behave themselves, how do they feel in the environment. <coughs> so her role is first to give the presentation, to give lessons. There is a three level <coughs> lessons that she taught children. And, to, and the main role is to prepare this environment. She should consider the age of children, their interest, their time, uh, their sensitivity <coughs> period, because during the different, um, from zero to six, this is a special childhood time that have such characteristic as sensitivity, sensitivity periods, and she would say there are three main characteristics that she would say give a special uh, name like mean, nebulian, and this thing. We can stop and talk about so she, a teacher should, should know about the spirit, should know about the sensitivity of children towards some particular activity or behavior or manner or something they would be really, really interested in. And she would um, say that it's not the like, possibility or necessity, it's highly, highly necessary for a child to um, to satisfy this uh, sensitivity, to develop, to use this sensitivity for development. And she would say that because the children, why she, she actually, after six, she would not call a child, like a person a child. Why? Because she noticed that from zero to six, if you remember your, if you will recall your childhood, do you remember the, um, maybe a piece of clothing that you wear? Do you remember that? Yeah. Yeah. Would it be so colorful and yeah. you would remember every detail of that? And you would remember even the status of, of your soul and what was inside the room when, when we talk about this clothes? Then she would say, absolutely limitless uh, memory that child has. So it's like sponge that accepts everything inside. And because there is nothing, there is no character, there is no um, person yet, that would be him. So as a physical influence, okay? so what we have uh, at the end, it is influenced by the environment, by what, what mother eats and drinks and her, her lifestyle. So this is also, the environment is so important for the child's development. So absolutely limitless, uh, limitless and um, a child doesn't choose whether he should remember this or not. He remembers everything. The second is why he acts. Do you remember a child when he starts, starts to walk? Or he wants, he pulls himself up? If you pull himself, he, him down, he would come up again. If you, would, you, you cannot stop him from walking, if he is interested in walking. If he falls down, it doesn't matter. If he breaks his nose, it doesn't matter. He actually broke his like, Not broke, like something. Because it's not, he's not choosing whether he will walk or not. It's nature puts this impulse, internal impulse for development. <coughs> A child is governed by nature until he is six. So this is so important. So when we teach such children, we shouldn't think, okay, if, we are, if I will not teach him, he will never learn. 
If I will not make him stand, he will never stand. But we, it's easy when he is up to one, like more easy. <laughs> but when he is four, it's very, very incompetent, I think, <coughs> to consider a child to be lazy. I, I hear parents to say, my child is so lazy, he doesn't want to do anything. He wants to watch TV and nothing and iPod and something. But that is the environment that he lives. If he's not encouraged, if he has nothing to do, just recall a room in a standard apartment as a child. That would be a couch and a TV and a carpet and a leaf. What he can do, what he's interested in. He's interested in kitchen, but even there, do you know what parents do? They tidy up all the shelves, so he's not open, no access to the things that he's interested, that he could be interested in, right? So, but Montessori environment, they welcome this impulses, they welcome this old man to work. So when he comes, if it, that something, the sensitivity works within him and only works within him and we build and we see, we know now because we have so much proof that they are ready to work and work and work and they want to work all the time. Right? <laughs> we want to be active all the time. So, but we consider the age, we know about the sensitivity. And if you check my blogs, I share what kind of sensitivity periods a child goes through. So, and we know what kind of materials should be there to, for them to satisfy this impulses. And he has a nebula. Nebula, she says, it is a capacity of a child to classify every information that he got. Like any case, of, he appears, he, he's born into a case. He doesn't understand anything, so, so many people, so many things, like, and even speech. Nothing is like, it is one thing, right? One thing. Important for children. 
if they don't move, they physically, they can't think. Because when you move, you have oxygen come to your mind, and that is, that is how you, okay, I can do, I can solve difficult tasks. But sitting and thinking, it's only a statue or a sculpture, you can do that. A human being is very difficult. When we're angry, we start to do something, we're very active, or we need to solve something difficult. So, a child is free to move and to choose what he's going to do. But once he chose an activity that he wants, he's putting himself, all his personality for this work. He's concentrating and he's um, putting all his attention for this activity. And that's how he learns, that's how he deeply, he's devoted. And that is what we want to, I want to see at the end, a devoted, a person who is devotion, devoted to his work that he loves, because he chose it. <laughs> um, very, very important also, and I like it, a discipline. Remember you, uh, yourself in the classroom, when a teacher would come out, what would the class do? Out in mass, shouting, standing up and talking to each other. It's all chaos, right? Now, Japanese classes are a bit different, but I mean, I don't know about this. I don't know about the Soviet. I mean, that, of course, it would not break the tradition. I don't know. Maybe we would have. For sure, we would have another uh, history of education. But we have a common, we have a Soviet, and we would have a class, and we have a classroom and a teacher, and this class would go mad. <laughs> would go mad. And, and when the teacher comes in, everyone's like, oh, okay. Yeah. So really? Really? <laughs> but it's, it's not the discipline that Montessori was looking for in her environment. She was talking about the self-discipline. The discipline that comes from inside, and because you understand, you are willing to follow these rules, because you understand that it is for your sake, it is for your uh, goodness, right? So she says that um, we have only three no's in our Montessori life. Can we guess that? Three notes? No, like, yes. No, no, yes. Ah, three notes. We we have only only in three cases we would stop a child and say, no, please. We fight it? No. no. It's allowed no. if they agree. Child just pick your back on this and ask you a question about the case of bullying. Bullying. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. in every school that I worked in, from K to 12, there's always a case of bullying. Mm -hmm. now, it's another school. huge case. I mean that um, we had such, like, but we don't consider a child a bully because um, we see that he, maybe he doesn't know how to express, we see the reason of his behavior and try to correct the reason. We don't say, don't do that. We Montessori approach is to show how. If you have something, some something unrealized or something inside, maybe a problem, how you can speak out. You can tell me. I can share your feelings. How, how we would solve the conflict or the problem. But let's not talk about bullying, otherwise we would go far, far away. Mm -hmm. But it sounds like there's a huge trust between the teacher and Sure, sure. Kids don't learn from people they don't love. This is teachers in our classroom, like, they are really, really, uh, ch children, they feel the deep respect in the teacher towards them. So when it is fighting, it's okay if they agree, let's fight. Okay, 
you want to fight? Are you, is it safe to fight? Are you, are, do you, are you really ready to, to be beaten into the face? To, to be in the face, is it allowed? No, on the legs. Okay, and they stand and they, So they can do that. What, what do you think? What do you think? Imagine a situation where we stop a child. So they can do anything they want. But how about, for example, if they eat sweets a lot? Of, I want to eat sweets. I, have, I want to have a lot of them. We don't have <laughs> sweets. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> I will say in the case of um, using the equipment, a uh, hammer or a nail, if they're about to hurt themselves, or say? Yeah, security sure. purposes also. One thing is prohibited is when it's dangerous for him or others. If he, he's going to do something dangerous, that would be so. But I never, I cannot recall even one time when they would do that. Child, they, children, they're so wise, they're so intelligent, they would, their intuition is so developed, they never hurt themselves on purpose. So the example of the hammer then, so would you first, so when the children come into the classroom, do you show them each, every one, every single thing? Do you show them how you do the hammer? Can anyone use the hammer when they first come in? Do you first need a lesson? Do you first? There are two, um, two, techni two techniques. One is, okay, you want to do that? I need to show that. I have to be sure that you know how to do that. Or, Mm, he can do, or I think you, okay, what's going to do? Okay, you can, you know how to take it. Do you think it, so he is handled? Okay, he's asking, I need help. But we see that if there is nothing like dangerous, if he tries, so we actually help him, but help him, okay, and what you do, how, how would we start, what you do next, okay, and then, um, so you're doing it. Do you need my help? Oh, okay, no, I don't need your help. But in general, they would, if they don't know, they encourage and they actually come up and ask. Could you please show me how to do that? Could you please help me? They are really skillful and this is the first lesson that they get. In the story what do you think of the second one? If they want to excuse themselves from the house or the other classroom earlier, would that happen? If they would no. want to go back home? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we have a three square meters for um, 35 children at home till the afternoon. So they are free to move from one floor to another floor to the play area, to the learning area. You know, but he had to leave the building and to well, go home by himself. If they want to go home, you say no. That's what he's saying. Um, that would be a no. They don't want to leave. Okay. But if they do, that would be a no. We ask them, please leave, we need to go home. <laughs> what? Okay, let's do it fast. So when it's, um, do, the, when they treat the materials disrespectfully, when they throw or they damage it on purpose, they say, please stop. And the third one is when, um, they want another material, but they didn't put the previous one on the shelf. So it is a rule that if you take something, you put it back on a place and you get another one. But there are materials that can be combined and they know about that. So um, I don't know, there are so many things that we don't explain to children. I don't know, they get the ideas from the materials. They get the, um, how they, the applicability of their behavior from the environment, from the teacher. So actually the, the whole Montessori approach, it is a system. And if you take away the freedom, nothing will work. If you get the one same age, it will not work. If you try to control the discipline from the, like, like it was in our classroom, like in Soviet times, it will not work. Uh, 
Um, interesting about the, and of course, because of this, and because of everything that I told you, this internal motivation, it stays within child, within a child. So I want to do this will. It is developed from everyday activity that he chose. Every time that I have to choose, I take the responsibility for my education today. I choose, I work, I choose another, I work, and tomorrow, and so on. So this, the characteristic of a Montessori child would be that it's not so easy to decline him from the goal that he has inside. He would say, uh, let me think, or no, thanks, I know what I want, I don't want that. They would be so conf confident in that. And that's how Montessori children, they become uncomfortable, Nudobni. Inconvenient. It's so inconvenient to have such a developed and conscious and active and confident child because parents need to be changed as well. So my work in, in the kindergarten is working with parents. And another thing that is also interesting, and that's where we stop, it's about errors. Do you remember how we were collected in the classroom? Yeah. Yeah, that would be right. Yes, if something went wrong, if, if, if you have a mistake, that would be an emphasis, that would be a, like, a big deal, right? So Montessori says that keep yourself concentrated on the good sides, on the strong points of a child. And that she advised that that is a way to build his strength and to build his character and to, uh, to multiply his good sides and his knowledge and his skills and so on. So we don't correct mistakes. We allow children to make mistakes and learn from them. If you spill something, it's okay. You know where the wrap, uh, like wrap like right this. Where did you go? Wipe. Uh, wipers are uh, like uh, where the wipers is. You clean them. Clean it up. If you um, made a tower. And I see that this one maybe not correctly, or uh, the bigger one goes up uh, than the smaller ones. It's okay. I don't. If his eyes are not ready, if his eyes doesn't see the difference, doesn't see this mistake, it doesn't matter if I say, okay, what, what do you do? Do you think it's right? Do you think we have to change it? Do you? What kind of idea would a child get from that correction? Ability to think. He says, no, teacher knows better. To be brave I to ask do him, something. I don't need to think. Yeah. And I don't see, I don't understand why, but I would do because I respect my teacher. Mm -hmm. But I would be afraid to do that. And if, next time he would say, should I put this book and then this, or no, this? So that is how we were treated. That's how we, cause how uh, we were educated. And children in our classroom, they're fine to do mistakes and correct. And we see that from manipulating these blocks from one day to another, and gradually he sees a difference and he corrects himself. And that is so amazing because he feels so proud of himself. Okay, last time, yesterday, I didn't notice that, but now I see, and he's so proud, and that's where the teacher also is needed, to share his success, success right? To share his success, and to be like, look, I, I can do that, I did that. And we allow children to discover uh, concept, to discover knowledge, himself before we before he asks us and before we tell him what to do so this is um, not all 
But Montessori wrote um, many books. One of them is The Secret of the Childhood. Secret of Childhood. Um, absorbent Mind. basic that I would recommend you to read. And if that would be in Russian, you can um, check and have, as a teacher, I really recommend you this is to be, uh, to read. Gippenreiter. She has two basic books. This is Общаться с ребенком как? Общаться с ребенком. Рейтер, гиппен рейтер. Как? And uh, the second book of this, продолжаем общаться с ребенком. Продолжаем общаться с ребенком. Так. So I will encourage you to read all the books that I wrote mm -hmm. because and what I see the final why would you have uh, before I, uh, I started you were thinking about a new kind of education right or a new system of education I see my personal understanding that I see that there is a disbalance about um, this is how my vision, it's, it's not actually like mine, but, but I, uh, I like. Education can be of three types. It is physical one. So everything about the body and the hygiene and uh, cleaning and regime and everything, it is connected with physical education. There is a... Um, humanitarian, so sciences and work and skills and everything, that would be humanitarian one. And the last one, and the most important one, is a spiritual education. This is how I see a child. This is how, in my kindergarten, teachers see a child. It's not only a body. It's not only he, he should be, not only she or he shouldn't be only developed in mind or in body. He should be developed in his soul. And that's what is missing in most Montessori environments here in Kazakhstan and even uh, abroad. To see an angel in a child, in a child. When you would read the Montessori, you would see, oh, they're an angel, I don't know. I didn't teach them that. It's amazing what they're doing. They know, they learn themselves. And she would say, that is a sign of God. That would say that there is a um, divine, uh, divine origin of it. Person. And this is what is missed. Remember, you, you asked about the teacher. If the teacher doesn't respect, or would say that the child is like, I don't know, he is not a divine thing, do you think he would be able to respect it deeply? Do you think something would stop him from uh, being rude or disrespectful? I don't think so. My experience shows no. If a teacher does not accept the divine origin of a person, the spiritual being, that they have soul, and that they have, uh, God created them with all the potential inside, that a child knows what he needs, it's impossible to teach them well, to make them happy. So this is what I would like to to be introduced in the whole, in every sphere of our life. Economy and education and 
and social spheres. First, we have to be, we have to respect and know ourselves that we are not only bodies, that we are angels, and accept that, and think about that when we solve everyday problems. Thank you very much.